What's up, what's up? It's Coach PR holding down for Vlad TV. Got a special guest today. Yeah. He's familiar with this, you know, platform. Mr. Cassidy himself. What's up, Cass? Feel good to be back, though. What's going on with you, man? Legendary. It's been a while, right? You've been on Vlad, right? Yeah, but you know, Vlad legendary, man. Yeah. Been holding it down forever, man. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for pulling up, man. Vlad, one of my favorite people, because he said when he came to the uh, me and Disaster battle, that was mm. like one of the... um. That was like the best memorable, most memorable moment of his whole career. And that oh, really? nigga been everywhere and did a lot of shit. So yeah. for him to say that, that meant a lot to me. So I fuck with Vlad. I mean, bro, you you know, you 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 were important too to the culture, bro. Come on, legend, bro. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, man, you hold down for, you know, freestyles, gave us some dope music. Appreciate that. Good for the culture, great for the culture, man. So I was having it's not my first time having you on the show. I mean, we did the other shows, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's all good. Anyway, let's get right into it, man. Yes, sir. So, on a, uh, a recent uh, Vlad TV uh, interview, Freeway was on there. Okay. And he spoke about a rematch with you. Yeah. And said it was supposed to be finalized on um, URL. And then Vlad, you know, jokingly asked him if he's going to need a beat. Because remember uh, <laughs> Freeway with the beat? Can somebody give me a beat? Yeah. Is this, so, is this going to happen? I don't think so. It was supposed to. I mean, they set it up and it was supposed to go down. They made the announcement, but um, I don't think it's. I don't think it's gonna be completed. I don't, I'm not sure. Why is that? I mean, I be speaking to the URL. They said they trying to make something happen. Right. I don't know if it's necessarily gonna be the freeway battle or if it's gonna be something different. But right now, it's looking like that's not going down. It's not going down. Yeah. Not freeway. Not anybody. For no. Right now. No, I'm definitely battling again. Okay. But just not freeway. I don't think it's going to happen with freeway. Okay. I think my next opponent will probably be somebody different. Okay. Um, so that's probably good for free too. Like, and I'm saying he had to walk off all of them years since the last time we battled. Right. And, you know, that wasn't something that just came and went. Like, you know, that stuck with him. Even when I run into him, he's telling me that. Like, people always bring it up. Right. So he got to live with that. So it's probably pretty good that we ain't do another battle because he have to live with it again. Yeah, and I'm even more like I'm <laughs> I'm I'm even more in my bag right now. So yeah. and at that time I ain't really know free. I mean I, I was familiar with his music, but I ain't know him personally. Right. And we was like young and hungry, so it was like on the spot. You know what I mean? So I ain't really have nothing technically prepared for free. Right. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even know I was gonna battle him earlier that day. Right. But with this type of situation, you got time to plan. You know you're going to battle somebody, so you got you could put, put it together. specific rhymes mm -hmm. together for this person. And it's like, you know, that's a different energy. I'm not sure if Free could deal with it or not because he never did it before. Right, right. Only the last time he battled was, um, well, the last time I think he battled was me and him. That's the last time I seen him. You need a beat. <laughs> um, so in another interview that was on Vlad, I saw um, Saigon, you know, said that uh, your career was fizz has fizzled. Oh yeah, I bought a kid. I did a uh, song with uh, one of the up and coming dudes from Philly. He like a monster, battle rap in on the music side. But we did a song and he sampled the little part. I I battle these rappers. I make them want to put a beat on remix. Like uh, you know, what I'm saying there's a dope record that me and him got out. So the, the new, the new, what's his name? K Walker. So why did Saigon say that your career was fizzled then? If you got, you still working? Because Saigon has said this in an interview that Cassie's career has is fizzled. Um, I would have to see the interview to know what he. He said it on on his podcast. Like you know, he has a podcast with um with Havoc. So he sat down, I think, with Math Hoffa, and he um said it. Um. I mean, it's an opinionated sport. That's his opinion, you know what I'm saying? Right. But I'm still super lit. Like, I got a core audience, a, a fan base that's never going to leave. You know what I mean? They're going to die still being fans of mine, and right. nothing going to happen with that. So, Right. you still giving them what they want. Yeah, and as far as, like, um, when people first started, like, really hearing about me, you know what I mean? I was signed to a major you know what I mean? I had like a major production company that I was signed to, and I was signed to a major label. Had wild money behind me. I was young and they was pushing me at the time. So I was like right in your face, all on the radio. It was video shows. It was like a lot going on. Now I'm an independent artist, you know and I'm saying, and I'm established. So, 
might not be right in your face like how I used to be all of the time, but um, it's a process, like, you know what I mean? And being independent, you got to plan it out and be more strategic, and you got to play with your own money. Right. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I think my fan base, and every day I get new fans that's, like, not yep. familiar with what I do or how I give it up. That's why I'm on this run now. Like, I've been doing a lot of platforms lately. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And um, even spitting bars lately to let people know that I still give it up. So not only is my core audience and the people that have been supporting me for years happy, but a lot of new people starting to get, you know what I mean, get down with the energy. I think people uh, get it confused just because you're not on a major and, and you're independent now, your career is fizzled. Yeah, for There's sure. people that still, just because you're not, like you said, you're not on the, in their faces. You're yeah, not. for sure. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's how the business go, though. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's a different from what the coach are demanding and what the business trying to do. Sometimes they try to meet up, but... You know, it's just two different things. And people try to, like, judge by, you know, how you doing business with them people to determine how hot you is or how relevant you is in the culture. Right, right. That's facts. In a recent interview that you did, mm -hmm. um, you took credit for improving Lil Wayne's career as far as rapping. Mm -hmm. Nah, I ain't say that. I ain't improve his career. I just said I inspired them to rap the way he's rapping. Like, to get the type of Wayne that people love and respect. How, with how, the how, creative. That? I'm not saying I'm the only person. I'm sure he was inspired by a lot of people. But, you know, the temperature I set with bringing bars to the table and going so hard, I made it like if you was trying to be lit at that time, you had to step it up with bars. You had to start piecing up more syllables, coming with more metaphors and similes. And I was doing that super super crazy at a point like you know what i'm saying then had the business behind me like i mentioned earlier while money behind me so it was right in people's face so i think at that time like um i shifted the temperature of the the culture and not just wayne but a lot of people that was around at that time was like inspired by me you know what i mean but i'm not saying um the way he make his music or the way he dress or act and right, all right. that stuff is all inspired by me like i'm his only inspiration like right. nah but the way I was giving it up was an inspiration to him to, to rap like how he was rapping. And I studied the business. I used to listen to Wayne before I ever came out and got around him. And I heard how he used to rap then. Mm -hmm. And then I heard the adjustments that was made after I came out. So it's not like, um, you know, I, that's why I'm saying it. Because I could hear the adjustments that was made, right. not just in Wayne, but in a lot of people after I came out. You know what I mean? And a lot of shit Wayne do inspired me to jump in my bag. Right. Maybe not with bars or lyrics all the way, but, you know, a lot of other shit. Flow play, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, word play and like a lot of adjustments to the beat that he was making, like, inspired me to jump in certain bags. Right. And a lot of people that came before me inspired me. So, you know what I mean? It's just like everybody got to get inspiration from somewhere. Somebody, right. Yeah. So that's where people just take it like you, you really meant that, yo, everybody got to step their bars up now. Yeah. No, I don't, <laughs> don't want to discredit what Wayne done. Like right. I said in that same interview, he like one of my favorite. Like I fuck with Wayne. Like um, damn near 20 years ago, I was calling Wayne out to jump on records and like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've been fucking with him for a long time and I know he dangerous and he one of the best. But in order to become dangerous and become one of the best, you had to be inspired by something. Right. By you some, know what I'm saying? Someone or something. And not saying that I'm the only one. I'm pretty sure it was people that before I came out, he was inspired by to get in the business because he was out before me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or really like mainstream before me. Like, you know what right, I'm saying? Right before, yeah. So I'm sure he was inspired by a lot of people, had a lot of people in the circle that inspired him. But I'm just talking about as far as bars and punching. Mm -hmm. You can't name nobody else that was punching or spitting like me to say that he got inspired by them. Right. Unless it's dudes before me that inspired me too. Right. Who inspired you? A bunch of people. KRS-One, Lil Finesse, um, Big Daddy Kane, Rock Kim, um, even dudes like... Nas, Jay-Z, Nace, Big, Pac, um, damn near the whole Wu-Tang Clan, the way they had their <laughs> movement. It's a crazy movement. Um, Mob Deep, um, even, um, even Noriega, mm -hmm. like 
and Philly when that what 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 yeah, yeah. what what yeah, like what, what, yeah. it's just like a lot of people um inspire me to want to go crazy um one of the most people though is like um cannabis like that's right before I got on and he was going crazy like with bars and being lyrical like yeah. you know what I'm saying so that's what I'm saying like even if I ain't tell cannabis, like he could still know that he was inspiration to me because I give it up. I'm like super battle. I'm a, like a super battle nigga. I'm super competitive. I'm super lyrical. I got a vocabulary. So the way he used to rap was an inspiration for me to develop this style I came up with. Yeah. Now he can't um take credit for everything I do because I'm not a carbon copy. I'm not exactly like him. Right. But he is inspiration. So right. You know what I mean? And all of them other dudes that I named before him is inspiration. I took little bits and pieces from all of them dudes to put it in my own pot of stew, whip it up, and come up with my own recipe. There's nothing wrong with that, too. Sure. So even if Wayne did, you know, didn't say it, he probably, some people would do it without even knowing, like unconsciously doing it. That right? too. Just listening and then knowing that, oh shit, I'm rapping or moving like him without even knowing it. That too. Yeah. You um Because it's the hot thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a, like for example, like for years and years, the Migos been, you know what I'm saying, inspiring wild people to jump in bags. Right. Whether they, like, say it and just, like, a, aware of it, or it could be down the line. They might not even be listening to the Migos. You could be listening to somebody that was inspired by the Migos did something, and then they inspired somebody else, and you a fan of them. Right. And you clinging on to what they do, not knowing that, Oh, they got it from somewhere. That's right. Yeah, but the Facts. original place that it come from is the first person that was doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, like you see that, like we talk about Wayne again. A lot of uh, artists look, look, flow like Wayne, act like Wayne, and not even probably knowing it's Wayne they doing it getting it from because Wayne had so many other. I don't want to say babies, but you know, exactly. sons, however you want to put it, the people that was inspired, and they got it from Wayne, who was original. Yeah, and you might look up to one of the babies of Wayne and be like, man, I don't even like Wayne. I don't even listen to Wayne. Yeah. But you listen to somebody that was super inspired by him. His whole style was right. from Wayne. From Wayne. So a fact. you still inspired by Wayne, even if you're not aware of it. That's right. That's right. Exactly. Says, uh, Cassie said he never lost a, a rap battle. Yeah. True or false? True. True? Yeah. Well, you know, some people are like, okay, wait. 2014, you had You Against Disaster. You won that one. For sure. Um, the You against Goods. Mm -hmm. Some people say Goods got that. Nah, I think it was over for Goods the first 12 bars I rap. You remember like those once bars? I, What'd you say? Nah, I would have to. You said the first 12 bars he, it was over for him? Yeah, something about that. I, I, I don't remember. Well, how what. do you know it was over for him? Did you see it in his face or you just knew that once I, once I had the people moving? How do you know it's over for them? Yeah, I seen it in his face. And just the level that I was rapping on at that time, he could never reach that level. It was just clear of that. You know what I'm saying? So, um, plus it's a business too. Like, you know what I mean? So people think because I make so much more money than the average battle rapper that I should give my all every time I go out there to battle. But just because it's a lot to certain battle rappers don't mean I feel as though it's what I'm worth. You know what I'm saying? So if I feel like I'm taking shorts, you might not get 100% of me. So you're you know playing down saying? to the, the, the competition? So bro? I know I could beat dudes just coming out there with like 20%, oh, 25%, like not even taking it serious. I feel like they can't beat me. So if the business not right and I don't respect the battle rappers as being able mm. to even beat me, what's going to give me the motivation and drive to want to, you know what I'm saying? go my craziest, like, you know what I mean? And I still super prepare. I be having wild material, wild rounds, even battle rappers that tell you, I be having way more material than they pay you for, because right. I'm super locked in. Right. But for me to have way more material and do my best, like take my best bars and put it into that, if the business not right, it don't make sense. Mm. So um, um, good business that was done is when I battled disaster. That's why I came back after all of that time and you know, clearly be him. Right. And well, then good business was done the last time when I battled Hitman. Like that was like great business. That's what I was gonna ask about so, Hitman and Arsenal. That's why when I came out and battled Hitman, um, I was more, you know, locked in. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because the business was right. And right. I felt comfortable about moving forward with everything that was happening. Right. So the 
And every time I come back and battle, um, I demand more. I need more money. I need more stuff. So yeah, I see um, that you I charge two hundred fifty thousand for a battle, and so you deserve more. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I wanted to keep going up. So in order to, for that to happen, I got to show people that I hold that type of energy to make the numbers go up. Like you know what I'm saying, and that's what I'm doing. Right. So that's my real intentions, like with this battle rap shit, to make it just bigger, not just for myself, but for everybody involved. The bloggers, the league owners, the actual battlers that's putting this material get, the, together that everybody pay to see. Right. But in order to do that, we just got to take it more serious and um, get in our bag. So I feel like, yo, I never lost a battle. And even after the goods, Arsenal and them, I was still dropping records um, on them dudes, blacking out just to show them like, that was like light. That battle stuff, I, that was light because the business was only a certain way. Mm -hmm. But- like afterwards, this don't this is my business. Like I could release this song on my platform. It's like I own the music. It's a different type of business. Right. So I could black out and just show y'all what I'm capable of. That's not like all I could do, just in case y'all got it confused. So that's why every time you see me battle, I'm gonna step it up even more because I don't go out there and do my best. That's what battle rappers do. I be out there doing my worst. So wait, so what is what drives you more? Is it the business or the competition? Say if the business is good and the competition is weak. Both, but I don't feel like no battle rapper is competition. Like if you just a battle rapper and like you're not really competition for me, like God paved the way for you to even do what you're doing. I know you look up to me like behind the scenes, the Mount Rushmore's, the biggest dudes in battle rap <laughs> look up to me. They told me like, I conversate with these niggas. I done talk to them. I call them and be like, yo, you ready for your battle? It be um, a couple days away and they not even ready yet. And I'll be like, yo, I said in my clip four and I'm just spitting, going crazy, crazy, crazy. After my 20 year run, after my platinum records, after my success, after the fact that I'm touring now, I'm doing shit now and I'm still in that bag. And these dudes don't be in that bag yeah. on top of the fact that they can't make music and do all the other shit I do. So I don't, I don't feel like they on my level anyway. So it's not like competition. It's not like I feel like, oh, they better than me or they could do something. Mm -hmm. Like, nah, like. Not even close. So like that's not going to push me. So the only thing that can push me is the business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Unless they start bringing bigger names that's like did more stuff that could say the same thing. Like or who? Even, like who? Like, you know, anybody, like a person that won awards before, a person that put out records before and was successful, a person Eminem. that did other stuff. There's not a lot stuff. of battle rappers that's actually made the music, you know, to, to for the, you know, that made it out there like that. Yeah, you I know? know. That's why I wouldn't be inspired they, battling them. It's like they dream come true. Yeah. It's like, I'm like the, I'm like the, um, the, the, um, game end for them. I'm like the, the final boss is like, you know what I mean? For them in their eyes, but they not that in my eyes. Right. So it's like they super inspired to like want to battle me. And it's like, I ain't. It's like, what is it? Like, so. Well, you, know I mean? you, 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 um, I feel like I'll be getting it short into the stick. That's why I need the business to be a certain type of way because that's going to motivate me to go out there and wipe the floor with these niggas. Well, here's somebody that he's. He's put up music, and um, I don't know if you consider him a, a battle rapper though. But I it's said that he was Meek Mill. You had a you know past beef with him. Would it ever be like a battle with you and Meek? Have y'all made up to you know get to this point to be able to have a battle? Um, nah, like salute to Meek, but Meek ain't battle rap. Like maybe he battled like back in the day to try to get on, like mm -hmm. to try to get people familiar with what he do. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like a bunch of people that did that, but still wouldn't consider themselves battle rappers. You know what I mean? So um, maybe that's the cloth he was covering back then, but it's been so much time of him doing other shit and doing music and in a different bag that I'm not sure if he even interested in battle rapping. I don't know. You know what I mean? So Will you be, would that interest but, you? Um, Nah, it's not like I want to battle them. Like, we already went through it, put out songs, went back and forth. We already, like, kind of had our own little battle. But um, I'm not interested in battling nobody. Like, that's what I said. I, the long as the business right, they could pick whoever I battle. Like, you know what I mean? I don't got no picks. It's not like my I got an end bar. It's like, yo, I want to battle 
him. Like, you know what I'm saying? And everybody that I feel that's dope, that inspired me, I wouldn't want to battle. Like, mm. I wouldn't want to battle the the names that I told you that inspired me. Like, I wouldn't want to battle Nas. Right, right. Like, how can I battle Nas when he was, like, super hot before I was even on doing my thing? Like, he, right. like, an inspiration. Like, a lot of the reason why I do stuff that I do is because I watch that man. Right. So I don't want to battle Nas. I don't want to battle KRS-One. Even though I know KRS-One got the mentality like me, he's super hip-hop and to probably battle anybody. Yeah. But I don't want to battle KRS-One. He is a legend. That's my inspiration, bro. Right. Like, I don't want to battle Rakim. I would never battle G-Rap. I would never battle Scarface. You know what I'm saying? I'm not battling DMX. Yeah. When I came around, nobody not battling X. Everybody got to battle me. Nobody right. not battling Kiss. Nobody not battling none of the locks. Nobody not battling Eve, Drag. Y'all got to come through me. Right. I respect the niggas that paved the way for me. I don't want to battle them. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I respect that. And the niggas that. that I would battle was like niggas that came around the same time as me and then after me. You know what I mean? But they should have to respect like the dudes that like the dudes that came before me that paved the way for me to get this hot. Like I said, I don't want to battle them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not saying I wouldn't. I would even battle myself. But I wouldn't initiate nothing. I would never disrespect them legends or like say I want to battle them or nothing like that. They would have to diss me and go all the way ham on me for me to even think about even going in that direction with them. But isn't that part of hip hop coming for the throne though? So even if somebody comes for you, but in like still in a respectful, disrespectful way, you know, instead of just, you know, they ain't telling by SMD, but they saying, you know, some other shit, but this is, I'm coming for the throne. Isn't that part of the culture though? automatically you gotta you gotta be competitive you gotta want to be the best you know what i'm saying yeah and um i think that's mandatory but like with battle rap i feel like i'm already the best so i don't really got nothing to prove like i feel like <laughs> i'm already the best so that's why i be like worrying about the business side because i already proved i was the best for a long time right you know what i mean and it's dudes that's out there doing their thing, you know, punching, scheming, doing low stuff, but they making a lot of mistakes. And because I'm not around or nobody that's at my level wasn't around, they think what they doing is just the best stuff. And, you know, that ain't it. Yeah. And these dudes have a lot of battles, a lot of chances, and they just be trying to compare that to what I did. I told you that's like 20 percent of me. So they trying to compare <laughs> like 20 percent of me playing around with niggas to like. 100% of this rapper, you know yeah. what I'm saying? In a field that he only specializes in and I do a bunch of different shit. So to make them comparisons, especially when I'm a rookie, like if you want to look at it, I only have four battles. So in this day and time, this new way of battling that they do, I only have four battles. So anybody else that only had four battles that was out there, you wouldn't even know them. Right. You would have exactly. never, heard of, never them. heard of them. You wouldn't have know about their mistakes or whether they won. They just ain't make enough noise for no real person to know about them yet because they only have four battles. But I have four battles and I'm like the biggest thing in battle rap. Numbers wise, views per battle, ticket sales, pay-per-view sales. And when I came back, my first battle after taking over a 15-year break, I headlined. I was the headliner. Oh. I had to perform last against a arguable West Coast Mount Rushmore. Like, you know what I'm saying? A vet that battled all the time. That's all he do. And I came back after 15 years and headlined. You know what I'm saying? I ain't give it, I ain't even get a chance to practice a warm up or brush the cobwebs off. They just threw me right back in the pit. And niggas see what I did, how I held it down. And that's another reason why I felt that as though the business wasn't right. Because after that, after I did that, um, the culture was um, trying to hate a little bit. They wasn't, like, giving me the credit that I was deserved after doing something like that. Like, you know what I mean? They tried to deny the fact that I took all them years off, popped all that shit. Everybody was against me, and I still went out there and won. So I felt a little type of way, so that's why... I'm not going to give my best performance into the business, right? Because the coach are not even respecting it, right? right like, right. if they was, like, going crazy and, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I would have felt like it's not even about the business. Like, I would have did it a different way. But the support wasn't there. So now it was strictly about business. The business, business. has to be right for me to 
to do what I did. But I've been doing it for a period of time now, and so the energy switch. It's not like the coach are against me no more because they know. They they realize it's real with me. They thought it was a fluke and I was delusional, but they see all of this shit stay the same and I'm really executing. I'm really I doing. I think they know. I think they know, bro. I yeah. think the culture knows. <laughs> yeah, I'm really doing what I said I was going to do, so it's starting to change. You know what I mean? It, but it's normal, though, man. If you come in somebody's field, they've been doing that forever, and then you come in and just say, I'm the best, Everybody gonna be like, what the fuck? Like, who are you? Like, yeah, they gonna feel some type of way, and they not gonna accept you. You gotta be astronomical for them to say you did good. Like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's what I'm dealing with. But it's cool. I like the challenge. That's what make. That's what give me the motivation. You know what I mean? Who who won the who won the uh, Meek and Drake beef? Um, they were going back and forth in the records, battling all. Yeah, that records. was a minute ago. But from what I remember, Drake. Because it took me a long time to respond. He wasn't even like responding the time period. Not just even judging what they did or the lyrics or whatever. Just the time it period time. it took. Yeah, like, and I think Drake was going, like, he had the record back to back. So he was coming then back to back, then uh, so more yeah, shit. Yeah, like, he going yeah. crazy. And it, it was took like. took him a while to respond. So it took me a while to respond. Yeah, so on the strength of that. Um, what's the what's the time frame for a response? Um, you know, everybody lifestyle different. You know, some people might got access to go in the studio right away. Some people might be in a different country, a tour in the summer or in a predicament where they can't. But you get to you get the news. Fast. You get the news to say, yo, so and so. If you take in a week to get a response, it's like, come on, bro. Nobody really care about these. Yeah, but like even that's cool, but like months and months and then like a lot of time is like it's too much time for you to be caught up in anything to not respond back to this. So, you know what I mean? I feel as though um, the sh the faster that you respond, the more points you get. Like if we giving you points right. for what, like, you know what I mean? Judging you for what you did, the faster that you respond, the quicker that you come back is showing how ready you is and how consistent you is and what you're capable of doing and how fast you're capable of doing it. Right, and your so, skill level, like you're not, just, you don't play with this. This is what I do. Okay, all right, I'm, here I come. Yeah. Right? I think people respect my the energy, fast response. Like, I, I feel like you can't really let it wait too long. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's necessary to address, you got to just try to get right on it. So what do you think about them actually, you know, settling their beat? That's with lyrics, though, with skill. Like, you know what I mean? When they testing your lyric and your skill, it's good to get right on it. But, you know, as far as, like, real situations or, like, real issues or beef, everything don't need to be addressed right away. Like, right. that's something different. Yeah, that's something different if it's really yeah. personal. But when it comes to, you know, hip-hop, say, yeah. you know, just lyrics and, you know, yeah. that. Sure. Right. What do you think about them when they sell their beef? They eventually sell their beef, Meek and Drake. Good for the culture? Um, yeah. I mean... It was good for the culture when they had beef too, because I like people being competitive and two big dudes like that had support, you know what I mean? Had a big fan base to see them being competitive and going at each other. I feel like that's good for the culture too, mm -hmm. especially when nobody get hurt, nobody get shot, there's no violence that's or nothing it, like yeah. that. It's just dudes being competitive and showing like, yo, I'm the best and you ain't gonna say that to me. <laughs> Right. I like that energy, man. I feel like that's what a rapper's supposed to have. And if you don't got it, it's going to be impossible for me to say that you wanted the best. Like, that's mm -hmm. like something mandatory that I think one of the best needs. Like, you got to feel that you're the best and you got to be willing to prove it at any given time. Right. That's the sport, the sport of hip hop. Um, so what was the past beef with you and Gilly? What was that about? Um. Me and Gilly never really had no beef. Misunderstanding. Misunderstanding. Yeah. And we've been a, we from the same city. Um, he had a buzz in the city before me. Like, you know what I mean? He was a little, some years before me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So even what him and his team, major figures and all them dudes did, they inspired me to want to do certain shit too. Because they had a wave before me. Right. So, ain't no real beef with Gilly. It's misunderstandings, you know what I'm saying? But... He never punched me, pushed me, did nothing Not to me. physical shit. Never shot none of my homies, never did nothing. It ain't really. That ain't beef. <laughs> nothing. It's like. You guys battled though, right? Did you got battle? Did you uh, have a battle? 
Um, yeah, I mean, not just a one-on-one -on -one battle with me and Gilly, but a lot of times um, he been in places where I just was going crazy. Back then it was more like cypher style, everybody yeah. rhyming. I mean, it wasn't like a street battle like me and him. Yeah. Yeah, people get but, that confused. The cypher. Yeah, I remember me and Nina Ross. We went down the house. It was like the whole major figures there, and we battled them back in the day. Um, and there was a dude that died, Little Rocky. He was down with major figures too. He was like one of the younger, um, artists that they had. And we used to battle. We battled a couple times. You know what I'm saying? And um, this one I was like super young, and we battled like a couple times. Um. I used to go around with Dutch from Major Figures and battle a lot. Ab Lava used to pick me up. We used to rhyme and like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had, like, they was, we was like from the same area, like, you know what I'm saying? And I knew them. So that's why I'm saying there's not no real beef. It ain't really what niggas think, man. It ain't no real issues. And that's why every time I see Gilly, it be what it be. Like, you know what I'm saying? Niggas be expecting it to be something, but. You know what I mean? Even my last battle that I had in Philly, he was there. You know what I'm saying? Came to support because it's just bigger than what niggas be doing on the internet and shit. Right. Everybody made it seem so big. Like, or when he went to, they said he went to your block. And was that the, the internet flipping it up? Or was that? Yeah, that was a misunderstanding too. That wasn't my block. That was the, um, the, the, when I got locked up mm -hmm. for the murder and attempted two attempted murders, the guys that they charged me for the murder and the two attempted murders on, that was they block. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So that wasn't my block. So, I mean, that's another misunderstanding, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But people just ran with it. Oh, Gilly on Cash block. Oh, my God. Like, you know, people <laughs> just can't wait to do that. Yeah. Especially when they know you, like, thorough and you cut from a certain cloth. They can't wait to find something to say you this or you that. And it's like, but that's a misunderstanding, too. That wasn't my block. Thoughts on AR And all of that sentence. came from just words. I think that was from an interview. Yo, is Gilly the king? And I'm like, what? It's like. And then people Words. take it out it's of like, their way. Yeah, it's say, like, yeah. that shit ain't about nothing. The king it ain't of really and stuff over like that. money. It ain't over nothing. It's just like over some, you know what I'm saying? Some words and shit like that. Yeah. And it ain't even about nothing like. Bullshit. <laughs> What's your thoughts on ARF sentence, sentence, uh, 45 year sentence? That's sad, man, because I know I have personally. You know what I mean? He a good dude, like deep down. Like, you know what I mean? So. That's fucked up. Nigga got responsibilities, got family and shit, so it's crazy. There was a lawyer that was on Vlad, um, Mo Gangot, and he said on Vlad TV that um, A.R. Ab got a lot of years because he was scowling at the judge, giving him crazy faces and all that stuff. Mm. And what happened at A.R.A.B.'s sentencing was a fucking tragedy. The judge, before he announces the sentence, says, young man, you've been sitting in my courtroom listening to the statements of the victims, listening to the prosecutor discuss your crimes, and the entire time you've had your hands folded like this, and the entire time you've been dismissive and jeering and snickering and scoffing. You don't look contrite. You don't look like you respect this process. I have the ability here today to give you a range of sentences. It could be anywhere from you know here to 45. And what I'm going to do, based in part on your behavior in this courtroom today, in this sentencing hearing, which is a couple minutes, Vlad, a couple minutes in your life, a drop in the bucket, based on your behavior here today, I'm giving you the max. What do you think about that? Do you think that's had a, a major part in him? Because he was just looking at the, giving a me mug, me mug in the judge? Oh, no, I can't. I don't, I, I don't know. I can't talk about why judge gave a man time or whatever, you know what I mean? I don't know. I, I don't even know the all of the charges that he got charged with. I just know it was ugly, and that, that man crazy. doing a lot of time, and yeah. that shit is messy, and you know what I mean? But when when you were- um, when You know, you, you see, I, you know, I have trying to carry it. I mean, it, <laughs> even in the courtroom, he making faces, he doing whatever he doing. I ain't seen it. I don't see it. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean, I, I don't really know about that. I can't answer that. When you went through your things, because were, were you, you had your charges, did you said uh, manslaughter, involuntary ma manslaughter? 
Yeah, double. well, that's, that was the case that I got hit with, but I was charged with a murder and two attempted murders. But the case that I, the, the charge that I got found guilty for was involuntary manslaughter. And you were sentenced to what, 11? Um, yeah, like, like 11, 11 and a half to 23 months. Yeah. And then I got um, five years probation for the attempted murders for each one. For each, so each one for five years? Yeah. So was that two, then was that 10 years? Yeah. Damn. How long did you stay on, um, on parole or probation? Did they give you the whole well, time? Well, it's parole. Years? It's parole until you finish the 11 and a half to 23. You know what I'm saying? You'd be on parole for that charge. Right, right, right. And then you'd be on probation for the the um, the um attempted murders. Like, that was probation. That was probation. Yeah, so after you do the 11 and a half to 23, then you got to do the 10 years of probation. And you did it, what, so eight months altogether? Yeah, I did eight months in the county eight and a half months in the county. But then I came home on parole, had to finish the 11 half, make it 11, um, make it the 23 months. Right. You know what I mean? Then after you do that, then you gotta do the 10 years of probation. Probation. Yeah. What was the experience like in, in, in the county? Um, it's ups and downs. Especially I for, mean, you know, for artists to go in there, for, you know, to go inside, like, if you got people, you got people that's gonna not like you, people that's gonna love you. How, what type of experience was that? Both. I mean, like I said, it was ups and downs, but I learned a lot. I'm happy it happened. Like it changed me. I'm I think at that point in my life I needed something like that to happen. So to slow you down? Because we all go through things and uh, and and look back and says, I don't regret it. Do you regret it? No, I don't got no regrets. No regrets, right? Yeah. I don't. So, yeah. I don't regret nothing I did. Everything I did happened for a reason, and I was trying to make the best decision at the time. Even if somebody else don't agree with it, with my mind and like and what I'm using at the time, that was the best decision that I could make. So I do everything that I want to do. So I don't have regrets. I don't look back and be like, yo, I should have did this and that. And it's like, nah. And like sometimes the things that you think you might have regrets on or would have changed, like the the consequences is what make you into the person that you is. Whether, you know what I mean, you're a grown man or a grown woman or whatever, like whatever you go through, that'll make you into the person that you need to be. So if you was to change that and that wouldn't have happened, then what would you go through in life to make you grow like that or learn whatever you learn from this predicament? Right. You would still have to go through something else. So if you ain't go through that, then something else will have to replace that to make you learn or grow the same way. Right, right. You needed something to make you get to mature. Yeah, I don't got no regrets. Like all of this is written is like God's plan is going perfectly how it's supposed to go. Mm. And um, a lot of people be saying they believe in the higher power, they super faithful, but then think they could have regrets to change something to make it different. And it's like it's going according to plan. What was the worst thing you went through in being locked up? Um, just being locked up, being away from my son. Um, that's my number wife. one, right? That's that's yeah. the number one thing right there. Being away from your kids, your family. Yeah, my son, my wife. You know what I mean? My mom, my little brother, my family. I just, you know what I mean? Couldn't connect with them. And then I was about to drop an album. Like I got locked up, I think like two or three weeks before my album. I'm a hustler mm. album drop. Mm. So that was like super crunch time when you're supposed to be like on your promo tour, heavy promoting, yeah. getting people to get this project. And the song was super hot. It was fire. Yep. So the promo run that I had set up was like crazy. And I couldn't do none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I couldn't promote the music. I couldn't promote the record. So that was like hard to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And then the reason why I was locked up, knowing the situation and, what people said and how people lying and trying to do that, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That shit was even more annoying. Money stopped, like, you know what I mean? I was supposed to be doing a lot of different things to, to build the bag up, and I wasn't able to do it. Able to do it. You know what I'm saying? Even if somebody might have, um, 
gave you some money for something that you were supposed to execute now and that's not possible. You got to figure out, damn, do I got to give money back and do yeah. I got to do like, like uh, it's like crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of pressure. And um, I still got responsibilities, still got bills, still got like cars and responsibilities and family and still got shit that got to be paid even if I stay in there for a long time. Right. So trying to figure that out is difficult too. So um, it was a, it was definitely a good experience though. I'm happy I went through it. I learned a lot. It's like geniuses that be locked up too. A lot of smart niggas, like, you know what I mean? Even Hella though they like, you know, in crazy direction sometimes. Niggas be geniuses, you could learn a lot. And it made me appreciate what I already had. Right. Like sometimes you just take it for granted. Like I was like super young when I got signed, shit start going right. Um, the money start coming in and I'm just doing me. So a lot of things that I had, I wasn't appreciating like I should, you know what I mean? Until it got taken away from me. And I'm like, damn, you, did. you start really realizing what's important. And a lot of things that you was putting your attention on when you was free, you realize that don't even come to your mind. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even think about that. When I was free, I thought I had to do this or worry about this. But when I'm booked, I don't even think, that don't even come to my mind. I'm worrying right. about this. Right. So I need to prioritize when I get back free. And, um, and you did. That's the reason why I'm happy it happened, because it made me into the, the dude I am now, and I feel like I'm in a perfect place I need to be. So the only way I could have got to that place is going through that. Going through it, yep. yeah. 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 Sure. What's your thoughts on text on being found guilty? Um... That's sad too. I don't want nobody to be found guilty, man. That shit is just, jail is just, even if you're guilty of a crime, we need to figure out a new way to re rehabilitate people and get- Unless it's some type of other crime, like, come on, like raping and doing wild, wild shit. Nah, like, that's- yeah, Something's you, mental with you, and I'm not saying you deserve to be locked up. Yes, you do, but in some type of way that you're still getting help. I just think even with everything that people do, you know what I'm saying? It'd be like a lot of mental illness, a lot of conditions that be pushing people to be how they is. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times it'd be signs or shit that could be prevented if they had the help and they had what they needed before they spent out of control. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I don't think jail is going to do it. Like, you know what I mean? Jail not going to stop. You know what I'm saying? Like, certain mental illnesses, like certain no, shit that people need going to be through. In the hospital. There's certain shit that people going through going to jail is not going to stop nah. them from being in that I bag. Agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so Certain things, yes, I agree. It's like you penalizing them, but they like wasn't in the right place from the beginning, so it's not fair. And there's nothing to even help them to, you know, mentally. And then it's a business too, so on top of that, mm -hmm. people be talking about like everybody that's like in that predicament is guilty or a criminal. Like a lot of times you could go to jail and don't even be guilty of nothing. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you could be completely innocent and still got to go through the same process. And it seemed like it's all cool if you're dealing with a criminal that deserved to be in jail, then that process don't seem that bad. Right. But what if you're dealing with somebody that's completely innocent? Like, you know what I'm saying? That, that whole process is kind of fucked up, so. Um, I'm not happy about nobody getting found guilty. That's fucked up, especially when you a name. Yeah. People know you. You got yeah. some type of fan base. It's crazy, but I know that case, that situation happened a long time ago with him and Troy. I don't know all of the details, though. But would so, you would you take the stand? Would you have taken the stand? Because he didn't take the stand. To, to help your defense, would you take the stand? Nah, I'm not. I'm not taking a stand. Like, that's the legal stuff. That's for people that, like, you know, either a cop or a lawyer or a judge or something. They do that legal stuff, man. Like, I'm not helping with the case. I'm not trying to hurt nobody else's case. I'm not trying to do no, I'm not giving no input. That's not my job. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I wouldn't have took the stand, but, you know, everybody different. I don't so even you know. Didn't do it to defend I your don't case. even know him enough to know if he like a civilian, if he a gangster, if he stick to them codes or not. I don't know. Um, it's yeah, like you know what I'm saying. Sometimes, that, yeah. 
Because sometimes you can be a civilian in a predicament and it's like, yo, you should take the stand. Why not? If you're a civilian, yes. But sometimes you could be a gangster involved in wild shit where niggas could have took the stand on you and they didn't. And then you go take the stand. It's like, yo, it it depends on the type of person you is. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's why I said I don't know enough information about that case to say why they should have took it But you didn't take the stand in your case. This is helping your case, right? You didn't. Nah. I didn't take the stand. Yeah. So, I ain't make no statements. I ain't talk to the cops at all. I ain't even say I plead the fifth or none of that. Yeah. So, I mean, we got with my legal team and let them talk. But what about Troy taking a stand on Textone now? Because he took the stand on Textone. Yeah, that's that? another thing. I don't, like, I don't know enough information. I know there's a lot of back and forth with that. Niggas, some people calling them a rat. Some yeah. people saying he did. I don't know. Like, I, I would have to talk to them and get more details. And I wasn't, like, investigating. Right. I just seen people blogging about it. Right. But I ain't, you like. You can't go off of that. Yeah, you, you I ain't know. digging. Right. And I ain't start calling niggas and asking questions and really trying to find out about it. Because I don't really know neither one of them like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, if that was, like, an artist that I had a relationship with and, like, really maybe fuck with more, I probably would have, like, found out more information. But. I never dug into that situation to see what like all the way happened. So I don't know who right, who wrong. So you what's can't say what. if he's snitching or not because you don't know the case, basically. Because is that snitching, him taking a stand against that? I just song? feel like anything you do, like, you know what I'm saying, with in my case, like not with other people because I don't know they predicament. But I just don't want to do none of that. Like, no talking, no doing nothing, no yeah, taking a stand, not, no, none of that, no right. statements. No, I made a statement, but I, I said he wasn't there when he was over here. Or I said he went to the left, but he really went to the right. Look, right there, I said he went to the left. It's like, <laughs> nah, you can't do that. You don't know what they're going to use that statement you made, what they're going to use it for. And it's definitely not to help nobody. It's either to lock you up or to use your statement to, to lock, lock somebody them. else up. Mm-hmm. It's never for you so if you do anything to help that process and you in the street and doing crime then you ratting yeah. it's like there's no way around it i don't yeah. see how niggas looking at it like trying to come up with all of these ways it's like you know what i'm saying like if you ratting you ratting just like you know what i'm saying okay suppose if you're not in the streets right you're not in the streets but you're rap you're a rapper now and you're rapping the street shit and then you go on take the stand That's it still different. depends on his case, right? It depends. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because some dudes be rapping street shit. They don't necessarily be street. from the streets originally. Facts. But once they get a bag, they get around street niggas and they start doing street shit. Mm-hmm. So, like, I mean, you don't got to do, like, you know what I mean? You don't have to grow up in the streets and spend a million years in the streets to be a street nigga. Like, it's some young niggas that's 13 that shoot us. Y'all only been alive 13 years. Yeah. So you can't say you've been, been in the hood longer than me. <laughs> you can't say you did nothing longer than nobody. But they street niggas. They they like little sh- they like little shooters. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, um. Tory didn't take the uh, he didn't take uh the stamp in his trial. He's trying to get his trial, come back again. You think he should take the uh stand? I don't, I'm never gonna recommend nobody take the stand. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that that shit is complicated though, man. That legal system been around before. It seemed like I was it was something born. else though was there though. Seemed like something else was in Tory and Megan's case. Nah, it's just complicated though. It's like me telling you something about that. It's like I'm from the outside looking in without enough information. That's like somebody trying to tell me about rap. Like, you could be a fan. You could have bought CDs from when you was little. You could have went to some concerts and all of that. But you're not going to be able to tell me about rap. Like, you can't. I don't (laughs) care how many comments you make, what you say with your opinion. You can't tell me about rap. Like, that whole time that you was buying CDs and going to concerts, I was really rapping. Sign, deals, business around it, in it, engulfed in it every single day just living it so you can't tell me nothing about rap just like i can't tell no lawyer that then you know i mean when all them years of college fight cases every day and do all this and they trying to lock you up and then your lawyer trying to get you free and the judge got a job and it's like cops got 
It's complicated, man. And it'll take a lot of work to be able to do their job. Mm. Niggas think they could do it. It even be niggas booked for a lot of years and be in the law library trying to get better. And they do be helping. Like some niggas get dope enough to do it if you could dedicate all that time. But it's gonna take a lot of time. So if you in jail and all you got to do is go in the law library and study all day, then you can eventually get as nice as one of them lawyers because right, you're right. dedicating the same amount of time. Right. But I'm out here doing this, so I don't got enough time to like dedicate to the, the legal side. Laws change every time they bend them and twist them and come up with, it's like so complicated. Dude, that, you know what? I was confused with the whole gunner situation. Like seeing this like, oh, you could uh, say this and this and I'm gonna let you, let you out, they let you out. Like I've never seen that, that case like that. I've never seen that before, bro. Well, even even if you're snitching, like right away, just here you go, you're out. Nah, they. I, that's what happened, man. That's what I got offered. I got offered if I was to tell, and you know what I'm saying, say that I would come take the stand on somebody else that they locked up. With that situation, they would drop my charges, my murder and my attempted murders right. and let me go home. Right away, today, today yeah. let you write out? Yeah, if I start ratting on other niggas and say that I take the stand mm -hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, help them lock more niggas up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's But that's then now possible. you can come back and say, I plead the fifth, and then this way you're not, you're good, and they're good? Because that's what I'm hearing they might do, like turn them around and still come up there and plead the fifth. Hmm, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know, but I know... They was offering me to talk, rat on niggas, and I turned it down. Mm. So every time. And even my lawyer used to have to come and tell me, telling me it's the law. Like, yo, I know I don't, you know you don't want me to say this, but they offered this and they said if you do this, I mean, I'm like, what? Fuck out of here. Like, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, they give you options, man. I guess if, you know what I mean, you want to get out of jail free card, they be giving them out. Like if you want to cooperate and help them out, but they ain't giving it out for nothing. You got to work for them. You got to help them and they'll help you. Speaking of Tory Lanez, you said he stole bars from you. What bars was, did he steal? Just know like when you ratting though, the shit got <laughs> we to be, that. The shit gotta be <laughs> even. Like you can't rat on something lower than you. Like you can't be out here murdering shit and then rat on somebody that was like stealing from a store. Like that crime don't match your crime. You ratting on somebody that's doing a lower crime than you, so that's not going to get you home. That's not going to get you nothing. Yeah. But if you rat on somebody that's like, all right, you might have got caught up and you got a little attempted murder. You ain't killed nobody or nothing. They'll send you home if you say that you're going to come rat on a nigga that they know got 10 bodies that yeah, they can't yeah. put on him. He got like 10 more attempts. Yeah. He moving work. He doing all yeah, type of shit that, that they can't connect them in. Big shit. So if you rat on him with this case, we could lock this nigga up, then yeah, you could go home because he's a bigger fish. Right, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Niggas be having to rat on a plug or nigga that gave him the work. Somebody that's over top of them for them to like really want to play ball with you. That shit bullshit too. But um, my question: What bars did Tory steal from you? Um, I forgot. It was a minute ago, and I ain't even really listening to it that much. I just played it back a couple times to make sure that he did. And um, I think it was like one of them bars I had, like one of them flows. The because you played it back on your, I think you played it back on the song. Got an axe with a cash at. I've been holding the weight for so long, I got a bad back. It might have been one of them, the bad back, the cast back. and I, One of them, mm -hmm. it's like one of these legendary, I got to look at it again, but it's like one of them legendary rhymes I got that like, if you like a cast fan, you know. And I mean, he did it one time before and I'm thinking like it could be a coincidence or maybe it could be like, you know, paying homage. You just ain't get the chance to let it be known. That's what I was about so to ask I you. Ain't really, rappers, do, rappers do that, though. They'll say your, your bars. So I ain't really paying no mind the first time. But then the second time when he came on the same show, then I think he was using my beat. Was that the of flex? Did he do a flex on the flex freestyle? Yeah, and I think it was even one of my beats or something like that. Or I don't know, but the way he did it the second time and then did it again after all that time not paying homage and then even more bars and getting even like... You ain't saying nothing about me to let niggas know you. Like, you just, what was that? Yeah, like, what was that? That was weird. Like, 
So like I just mentioned it and that's how this shit kind of spun out of control, but it's hip hop, man. That's hip hop. Yeah, but I come from the times when like they be trying to compare me to niggas that got ghostwriters. Some niggas that I ghostwrote for or I know they ghostwriter. So that's why you can't compare me to them. Like I'm, I can't like really let you compare me to niggas that got so much help. Yeah. Like it's like a lot of input of a bunch of niggas to make this artist and then me is just me. So niggas be trying to compare it and it's like, yo, that ain't fair. Yeah. Who'd you ghost write for? A lot of people, man. Some of my inspiration, some dudes that was on before I even thought about rapping to getting a deal and I like their music and then I got around them and gave them bars and they accepted it, took it, loved it. And then younger people that came after me Dudes that was around the same time as me. Even some of these people that I might have had issues with or might have battled with in the past. The reason why I might feel some type of way is because I know what I did for you. I know when I gave you lines and inspiration and right. all of this shit. So, you know, but I don't, I don't like to call out names and I mean, all that's that. That's what I like, actually say. Like, so is this a, like, this is an unwritten rule that you, the artists will never say, the, the writers will never say who they wrote for? Because when you ask people that, it's like, I'm not going to say who it is. Like, but isn't your credits on the, on the song, though? Yeah. Um, right. So Sometimes. Uh, not, not all the time, though. Mm. Not all the time. It depends on how you write it. it. It just depends. Like, you know what I'm saying? How you work out the deal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It depends, but. Um, I just don't like to put people on the spot because people with ghostwriters don't want you to know they got ghostwriters. That's why it's called ghostwriters. Like, I could see if it was, like, singers. Like, they don't mind. It's right. really about their voice. So they'll let you know who wrote the song. Like, yo, this he wrote my song. Or Babyface wrote it. Or Neo wrote it. Or this, like, yeah. they'll let you know. It's no real problem. Did anybody write for you? But even it is doper when singers can be super dope, sing, and then write their own songs. That make you, like, even a level up. Level up like, more. Like, you know what I'm right. saying? But they do need a lot of, they usually have like, what, 20 writers for R&B songs, stuff so like that. So when you could write your own songs, that's dope. But with rap, that's mandatory. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be biting. You're not supposed to be taking other people's stuff. And you're not supposed to be having a bunch of writers. Mm. But, you know, that's been going on since the beginning of time. Like, But can you be considered the, the greatest or one of the greatest if hit, you don't? A hop. Like, you know, that was... Nobody's written. supposed to write that for you, though. <laughs> <laughs> but they did though, like you know. They Grand did. They Master have a lot Cass. of writers on there. Yeah, Grandmaster Cass wrote um, on Sugar Hill. That the that record. Sugar yeah, big part of that song. So yeah. from the beginning of time when rap first started, niggas had ghostwriters. They just wasn't familiar with it. One of my favorite songs was the Vapors from Biz Markie. Rest in peace. And I found out that Big Daddy Kane, Kane wrote that. Kane wrote that. So it's like since the beginning of time when niggas was falling in love with music, it was a collaboration of a bunch of people. Yeah. But you can't be considered one of the greatest, though. Can you nah. still be considered one of the greatest rappers, and you don't? You, you're not a, a writer. Not in my eyes. Okay, cool. Like the dude from Sugar Hill Gang that got that verse from Grandmaster Cass, he can't be considered the best. Like Biz Markie, that's like one of my favorite songs that like inspired me to want to rap. But I can't give Biz Markie the credit for that if Big Daddy Kane wrote it. Wrote it right. Now Big Daddy Kane is like my inspiration. He's like one of the best lyrically, but I can't give that to Biz Markie because he wasn't responsible for it. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that's the school you come from. So with that being said, Drake is considered one of the best artists right now. Rappers. He doesn't write a lot of his records. So being said, right? You want to consider him a great rapper? One of the greatest? No, he is definitely great at what he do. And he's good, but he can't be the greatest rapper. Right. He great at the other stuff he do. Where there was picking the raps to rap. Mm. Picking the ghostwriters, picking the flows, the styles, the beats, the tone of voice, the way he could harmonize and come up with harmonies and melodies and probably add wild shit that the writers didn't give him. That's all talent. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, and how to bring it to the table, deliver it, and make people like it. That's all a part of what make him great. But I'm just talking about as far as lyrically and bars, you can never put him as being lyrically right. one of the best rappers if he not even writing right. it. Right. That don't that don't make no sense. Like people try to make it make sense. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like simple as that. Like if you don't write, how can you be the best writer if you don't actually 
write raps, how you gonna be the best rapper? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You gotta be able to rap to be able to be considered the, the, the nicest rapper. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the nicest rappers don't just write for themselves, but they write for other people. They like make other people dream come true through their mind. Through their mind. They so yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. And those dudes that do stuff like that could arguably be considered the best MCs. And Dude, then through different the time periods, it's like you can't compare through different time periods. Like I can't compare Grandmaster Cast to Pop. Right. They like two different times. And yes. it wouldn't have been no pop if it wasn't for Grandmaster Cass. Cass. Yep. Like you can't compare pop to like um like Kendrick Lamar. Or, or, like or, or how would Cole, it yeah. been Kendrick Lamar if it wasn't no pop? Like all that stuff that Pac did and at that time, I can't compare them and say who better. Cause the dudes that come after Pac already starting on the higher platform because the work that Pac put in mm -hmm. and the people mm -hmm. that was influenced by the work Pac put in. So you learn from all of that energy to do what you do now. So even if you did step it up, you can't say you better. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just cause people in the NBA is doing like a lot of shit that they wasn't doing back in the day. You can't say that they better than them players. They just started from a, all that information that all these dudes created through the years, y'all just had that access when y'all first started. Right. So that puts y'all in a better place. So y'all are able to get better, but you can't compare them. Like can't compare them. It's just Good like a different it. time. Good way to put it. And the only way you could compare it if two people still active, like then you can compare it. If two people still active and fighting or it's two people still active and playing ball, then you can compare it. Right. But and that's still tough because now he's on his, you know, one is in their prime, one is on the decline. So it's like not even fair to do that, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, if it's like a rookie or like a newer guy and like a dude that's about to go out the door, that's what I'm saying. It's like they could be playing at the same time. Yeah. But it's just hard to compare. Him? Of course him. he is. He's in the know. And this new rookie dude probably learned a lot and got inspired from all of the years that this person was playing to be in a better position now. Yeah. So that goes back to the beginning of the conversation with Lil Wayne being inspired with the other guys that you don't even know that you was inspired by Lil Wayne through the other artists. Goes facts. like that. And even people like J.R. Smith, I was watching his documentary the other day. And shout out to J.R. with that. And he like was like, um, like not trying to bend over backwards, not be a yes man, doing a lot of things people thought he shouldn't do. Like, you know what I'm saying? But his dream was just to get to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he accomplished this dream. He accomplished this goal. He did what he set out to do. You know what I mean? But he was doing a lot of stuff that people don't approve of at the time. But now you look in the NBA and look how many people is in the J.R. Smith bag right now. Mm -hmm. When AI was doing all that stuff he was doing, he was getting like criticism. But now everybody in the AI bag, like everybody yep. wearing rapper clothes, everybody yep. got tattoos, everybody getting rapper hairstyles. Yep. And yep. Everybody is like, street niggas now niggas mm -hmm. is throwing up gang signs niggas is doing all, all type, type of shit, of shit. <laughs> but it's like if ai ain't go through all that criticism and make that sacrifice for niggas to be able to do that then how would they have been able to do it so to compare somebody that's playing right now to ai that's like disrespectful facts like i don't i don't like to do that rapper pmb was killed in la you met you met pmb rock one time Mm -hmm. I wasn't really, even though he was from the same city, we ain't, we ain't have a relationship like that. I only met him once. We only met him once. And this was in New York. He was like coming out the party and I was pulling up to go in. And I seen him real quick. We busted up. I think we exchanged numbers. But that was the only time I seen him. How'd you feel with that situation happen? Sad. Somebody man. from your city just met him once, probably was going to be like out of here and feel like he was already big. Yeah, he had some big records. Um, God's plan, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's all I could say. You know, a bunch of people could probably think of different things that you could do after it already happened, but it happened already. What happened? Like, yo, he shouldn't have been at that Roscoe's. Like, all my LA niggas was like, yo, why he was there? Like, you know what I'm saying? We'd have never... Yeah. Like, niggas like, man, I don't even go there. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm from out here. I wouldn't even go to that joint. Like, for what? Like, right. they ain't. 
So, you know what I mean? You could say, yo, he should have went here. He shouldn't have did this. Or he should have gave up his jury. He should have did this. Like so many scenarios people be coming up with, but it's already over. Like you said, so it's sad. God's plan. It's crazy, but. Just good though, you know. Um, at least he got to make an impact on the business. Got a big fan base. And, um, and a lot of people minds he going to live forever. Forever. So mm -hmm. some people could live to be like 120 years old, but don't make no impact on the real earth. They might got a couple people that know them, but that's it. They ain't really do nothing. They ain't change nothing. They ain't doing nothing. So when they pass away, they just pass away. You just live long, but for what? Like, you know what I'm saying? Some niggas might live shorter, but have a super big impact while they was here. Like, you know what I'm saying? And they name might live on and some longer than somebody that lived to be mm -hmm. 100 or something. Yeah, cause like, you know because you're hundred something. That mean that don't mean you live. You just was alive. That Look person the that was thirty we was actually living. Big pop. Them niggas was in their twenties, bro. Yeah. Like they super was living. young boys. Yeah. Even Malcolm X and Dr. King, when they got hit, they wasn't super old. They wasn't senior citizens right. like no. pre like presidents. They was right. young boys. Right. Like you know what I'm saying? Getting hit. Made an impact. But niggas ain't never gonna forget about them. If people religious or believe in these scriptures, Christ was thirty three years old. That's a young boy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't like an old age. He was a young boy, but look what he did in them 33 years. So, I mean, that might be kind of like a little lesson in itself. Like, you know what I mean? You don't got all of the time, so you got to try to make as much of an impact as you can while you got it. Words from Cassidy. For sure. I like that. Okay. What, um, well, your, your record with R. Kelly, one of your biggest records, biggest hits. How do you feel about R. Kelly's on um, being in prison forever? It's practically forever, damn near. And I know, like we said, we don't. Nobody should go to jail, but you know, how do you feel about R. Kelly's situation? It's like, man, it's sad because his music, man, and like his capabilities and all of the work he put in is like kind of getting mixed up in the whole shit that he's going through as a person. And that's the sad part. Yeah, I mean. And then forever, I don't know if like, you know what I mean? What Some mean, niggas like? be down for like super homicides and still won't be in jail forever. Or way worse shit then. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know like, like with his case too, I know it got to do with like, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with little girls and all that Underage stuff. Girls, but it's like yeah. so many cities and cases and different stuff and so many different charges. It got so out of control that it's like even hard for me to follow everything that he got found guilty of to know where they deserve that much time. But it's just sad, man. I was an R. Kelly fan before I met him and before this whole shit went down of his music and I fuck with the work that he put in. So it's just sad that he not gonna be able to do that no more. Mm. Or like we was just talking about writers and creators for other people. So not just for himself, but the work that he could create for other people to just be incredible. It's like not gonna be available, at least not in the same way. No more. So, I guess that's where the um, where you take a loss at. Cause I don't know him personally. It's not like he was my friend or, like I only met him twice, and we ain't really get the chance to like talk really or bust it up that much. So it was like you just just work real quick and that was it, right? Yeah, like you know, I ain't really know him personally like that to be taking a loss from him going to jail. But as a fan of the music. And knowing all of the work that he put in with music with other people, I know that's a loss that the coach is going to take. It's fucked up. What's your thoughts on, on, I don't want people to think that I'm on the side of R. Kelly or like justifying what he did or saying whether he's innocent or guilty or nothing like that. I ain't saying that. I just was a fan of his music and I'm going to miss that. And if we're going to start locking people up like R. Kelly for life, for what he, whatever he accused of doing, they got to be more fair. They got to start locking up all of the people that's in that bag then. The parents too that was throwing their children, they, the yeah, daughters to him. you can't just pick and choose and just lock up our Kelly. People on his team, outside his team. They, you got to go through with everybody that was involved in that. Yeah. That's how I look at it. And they gave him a RICO charge. It was supposed to be like an organization, right? A RICO. And it was just him by himself. So if this is a RICO, where's the rest of the people? If it's an organization.
That's what I'm saying. That's why when you was asking me them law questions, I told you I couldn't answer because they just make it up as they go along. <laughs> so right. for you to try to answer questions, it's like you just talking yeah. in a circle because right. it ain't yeah. it ain't no way around it, man. Thoughts of mumble rap? Because I remember you doing that freestyle just some mumble raps a while ago, mm -hmm. like Uzi Vert and Yachty. What's your yeah. thoughts on it? Still the same thoughts? Um, I'm in a different <laughs> place now. Like, I don't, like, I'm in a different place now. And um, I think dudes that was considered to be mumble rappers dope in a lot of different ways. I yeah. just ain't really acknowledge it because my main focus is bars. That's what I really care about, bars and right. punching. And if you don't bring that to the table, then I just block out all the rest of the shit. Like, that's trash. That's I don't trash, like it. Right? Yeah, I don't like it. Here, yeah. <laughs> but it's a lot of other shit that they do that's super dope. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? And a lot of times when you listen to the music, you don't even be in the mood to hair bars. Sometimes you're not even in the predicament to hair bars. Like mm -hmm. if we in a party or a not club. even in a club, just say we like in some like lounge or some cigar lounge or something and we having a business conversation like this and we like, you know, just vibing, drinking, smoking, yeah. vibing and talking. Like you might want... You don't want it to be like super silent. You want it to be a vibe. Right, right. But you don't want to be listening and dissecting lyrics and right. similes and punchlines and trying to hear every word because you need to hear every word to break down the punchline. Right. So you can't hear everything and you're trying to do that. That's difficult. Right. You don't want that type of music. You want the type of music that just a vibe. Mm -hmm. You barely got to hear. Maybe every once in a while you might hear one word. Like, oh. Yeah, oh, so, yeah. you repeat like, it. Yeah, and so that's you're saying it, yeah, right. and then it's like, oh. Yeah. And then it's like, yeah. back and up. <laughs> yeah. It's like you in and out with it. And that's like a vibe. And um, it's all different type of music that's needed for life. So um, my main focus is just bars because they try to put them in just the same category as niggas with bars, and I don't think that's fair. Right, like, you, you can't, don't got you can't bars, do and you doing a different type of music. They shouldn't just say you a rapper and try to compare them all because we not even doing the same right. type of shit. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and Philly is known for having lyricists. Then you have uh, the Uzi with the song he comes out with on uh, "Wanna Rock," which is not you know a lyrically song, right? But he's from Philly. But the song is huge. Mm -hmm. Got a huge song. Mm -hmm. When you heard that song, what was your thoughts on it? Um, I'm happy though. It give um the youth in Philly, or just period, not just in Philly, but period. It give them another lane to go down. Now you don't just gotta have bars and rap this way. Now it's other forms of music that you could create to be successful, make money, and entertain people. So. Um, I'm happy he came out with that type of song. You know what I mean? Uh, be able to bring another type of music to the table. That's dope. I mean, everybody don't got to be lyrical just because you from a city or from a place or everybody don't got to go in the same direction. I think a big part of what hip hop was is being original. Like, you know what I mean? I know bars yeah. and lyrics is important, but... Originality. Even a lot of dudes that wasn't that lyrical back in the day, I used to love them because they originality, they the way they beat sound, they had their own producers, they had their own style of doing choruses, they had their own like tone of voice and flow and style and beat per minute that they used to use. So the feel was like unique and only them. So they might not have been the most lyrical, but they were super original. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm happy that it's going back to that. Like, even if you're not lyrical, whatever you're doing, be unique, be yourself. Like, when I hear this, I, I could put it on the person that it is because only you do this. Mm -hmm. Like, not like hear you and get you confused with 10, 20 other people and not yeah. even be sure if that's you or somebody else. You don't even know who it is. I think yeah. the labels had a very big part in that because, you know, when you just go, to, especially back in the days, you go for a meeting, they had, we're looking for the next Jay-Z. We're looking for that Nas. You don't, you don't have that Nas shit, that Jay-Z shit. And they always want to compare and make you into the artist that you're not to somebody else. That is huge. And that's business. That's the business, the business side. Part. The people that's not creatives, they don't understand why Jay-Z or why whoever the names they throw out there is so successful. They just know by the paperwork, the statistics, right. that whatever this person is doing is working. So we need this. We need a person that can make this stuff work on the business side make us be able to generate this type of attention and this type of money. 
Now, we don't understand the creative side. We don't know what it takes or why, mm -hmm. Jay-Z, why this person is like this. We just telling y'all we need something like this. You know what I mean? And that's just the business side. That's how they do business. Like, you know what I mean? They look at the statistics and the paperwork and what works. What got the most radio spins? What got the this and what got that? And look, this got this and this amount of days. We need something like this. And that's what they tell you because they not the creatives. And that's the reason why these bigger labels was signing these production companies because those are the people that's supposed to take control over the creation. Right. We tell you the business, we need something like this. So we need you to compete with this. Right. And then you, as the production company, you go back and you figure out what it is that you could come up with to try to compete with this type of stuff. Yeah. And we had just give you the money for it. We not really the creatives. We don't know how 50 Cent got like that. All we know is he's got shot or you know what I'm saying? He, he did so that. They only know details. Mm -hmm. So Let's market it. bring us another <laughs> nigga that got shot or bring us another nigga from yeah, this or bring yeah. us another nigga beefing with something. Like they don't really understand it. They just trying to do the best business. And then you can't knock them for that. That's all you they know. know it's the business part behind it. They're not creatives. Yeah, but it's up to us to not get it confused, not to think just because they say, yo, yes, bring sir. me the next 50 cent that as a culture, you supposed to want the next 50 cent right? or the next this or the next Jay-Z or the, nah, you want, you want something new. Like I, if I want Jay-Z, I'm going to still go to Jay-Z. If I want 50, I'm going to go to 50, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But this next thing got to be something unique. And, and I think we back at that time, that. you know, the game going 360. So for a long time, it was a bunch of just the same thing and they wasn't even going through artist development to create something different they just was taking whatever you brung and that's what the artist was bringing the same thing that's yeah. what they thought they needed to do to get hot but now we at a time where it's going back that you have to be unique to like stick out and win yeah so most of the songs that you hear right now and that's like kind of winning like regardless if you like it or not or you think it's lyrical or you think it's this is unique like these they they starting to sound different you able to tell people voice, the style, the way they going in the direction, you able to tell them apart. You know what I'm saying? So, and the culture going to demand that more and more. You know what I mean? That's going to come around even more and more. And then you're going to get back to the place where we was, where you had the young pox and the bigs and puns and mob deeps and like a bunch of different people that's just like their own person. It's going to happen again. Yeah. Um, money bag, yo. You listen to Money Bag Yo now? Yeah, I like him a lot. Why, why, why Money Bag Yo? Because I oh. said I saw this that you said this who you listen to now. So I'm asking you why man, Money Bag Yo? Um, I just like what he talk about the um, his tone of voice, his like subject matter, and like he sound like unique. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't sound like That's a, why I ask it. Cause, see, when yeah. I hear his song and when I hear his voice and hear him, I don't get him mixed up with a bunch of other little right. niggas. It's like, yo, that, that shit hot. I could tell his voice. I Like, even when you look at him in his videos or whatever and how he carrying it, it's just like he in his own bag. So that's why I like him. And he could rap. Yeah. He could rap too. Yeah, he be, be saying some shit, man. I, I like him. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, I'm listening to right now, though, too. Who? Like, it's like a lot of different stuff. Like, that's a different bounce, but I can't compare him to like Griselda. Like, right, I'm listening right, yeah, to them right yeah. now. They going crazy and going. It's like two I'm different fine. types of style. style. Everything. Like, yeah. I, it's like how can you but compare they, but that? But different regions. But he, that's you know, you know, he's from Memphis, right? So it's like you get in the Memphis sound, that Memphis feel. And when he has some East Coast shit, you listen to that Griselda, New York shit, right? Mm -hmm. So you get that feel. I fuck with Griselda. They like, um, they super dope and super lyrical. Plus they got like, um, a big like white fan base from being around the Eminem and mm -hmm. them type of beats that they like. And it's yeah. like, not like, I mean, they talk her shit, street shit. They talk about trapping and shooting. They talk her shit, but they fan base is like different. <laughs> that's that's weird, right? Yeah. So, but I guess because that comes from being with you know Eminem, he, they caught those fans. Yeah, for sure. You know, and that's dope though. Yeah. Um, they like um, they like the you know those the, type of fans though that they getting from the Eminem people, mm -hmm. from Eminem being connected to him, is like a dope fan base to have because they support and they like to hear bars. 
Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They're not like with all of the, they like to hear bars, bars, like, you know what I'm saying? So that's why they could get on slow beat per minute beats that you can't do none of the new dances to. Right. But you can hear them. You can and hear they them. just rapping and people accepting it. And is accepting, they accepting it on a more major level now. So people able to see like, that's not some underground shit or something that don't nobody like. You able to see that a large amount of people in the world want to hear bars too. Not saying they don't want to hear the little Uzi bounce verse and song bounce, and but dance. But they want to hear bars too. Yeah, but a lot of people want to hear niggas spitting and talking that shit and putting together syllables and creative shit with the bars. That's like how he think of that. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Not like, yo, that's like, I could dance to it and it's fun. Like people like to be like, yo, damn, how what the fuck he said? Like dissected and like, how did he think of that? Yeah. And it's billions of people in the world, so you gotta please everybody. So for a long period of time, the dancers, the niggas that wanna have fun and turn up and vibe, they got years and years and years and years of music. Yeah. But it's like time for the niggas that like lyrics, like to think and like to learn. You know what, what I'm saying? What was that dance move you just did? It looked like you was about to do that uh, one of rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a difference, man. Hey, you broke down Eminem's rhyme pattern. Can you break that down for me again, please? Um, Eminem is like one of the greatest, though. Regardless if he white or not, just the work he put in, how he sound, how he go, he's like one of the greatest. Um, I think people got it confused. I think one time I was doing an interview with somebody, was, I think it was Mav. At that at the house, and I was breaking down how on one of his songs he was rhyming like one syllable, and then on um another song he was rhyming like two syllables. I was breaking that down like mm -hmm. the amount of syllables that he rhymed. Some people would be saying like he like rhyme crazy syllables and he like right. super, and he do in certain certain rhymes like certain rhymes you could go to he'll piece up a lot more syllables and rhyme way more shit. But I'm just talking about like what got him popping, what I like him for, and like like some of his biggest songs. He wasn't piecing up syllables like that, like you know what I'm saying, and that's what I was just breaking down. But not trying to knock knock Eminem or nothing. No, like that. no, just I, trying I, to no, say how great he is down, and yeah. how he understand the science and he using mm -hmm. it to be successful. But a lot of people don't understand what he's doing because they don't understand the science. Right. So when I even say that he rhyming syllables or whatever, people don't even understand what I'm saying because they don't care. They don't even look at rap like that. Like they don't even know what I mean. Like they right, can't right. even tell a difference. <laughs> they don't even know what I'm saying when I say that. So they like, who cares? Like yeah, who about the fuck that? Like about? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's the people that just do. You know, they like um. Those are the people that's like random fans like all right like how i like um football like i like football i watch the super bowl if somebody hyping it up it'd like it'd be good i even play madden right but i'm not like a super football fan i don't know like every team and every coach on every team and a quarterback for every team and yeah. All of the players on every team, and yo, I don't know what oh, yo. He's this defensive lineman. He went to this college, and he he went there, and he did this. It's yeah. like some people know real statistics. They study that shit. They locked in every day. They know everything. So it's like I couldn't tell them type of people nothing about football. Yeah, I could say yo, such and such gonna win the Super Bowl, but what am I doing that by? Like from yeah. what information am I doing that by? I'm yeah. just saying it. It yeah. don't hold no weight. Yeah, so a lot of people say shit about rap and it don't hold no weight because they don't got enough information. But how about the people that really do have the information and, and might look at, say, a Cassidy. They have a Cassidy project, right? Mm -hmm. They don't listen to the pro They listen to the production, listen to the next production, and then go, listen, Cassidy. It, this When you went to the second one, why did you do this one? Because it took away from, you know, they probably dissected your projects just like that super fan of football mm -hmm. and telling you this. And now you're saying, bro, how you saying that to me? You, I'm the rapper, not you. Because why I said that is because Stephen, Stephen Jackson, he says that all the time. You guys are just fans. You can't tell us about basketball. Maybe we can say something because we see the, from the outside looking in. Just like a coach, he see, he's on the outside looking in at the game. I like your analogy, but it's like a team But it's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it's like a team game and it's like more difficult. But look at boxing. Like... If you're not really like locked in a boxing and you never boxed yourself, 
Like you never really do combinations. You don't know the pressure of it is like the pressure to be in the gym mm. or to try to pull anything off. You never really had your hands up and really tried to land a combination against somebody that hit super hard. Or you never like tried to land a combination against somebody that was naturally faster than you. Mm -hmm. Like you never been in these predicaments. So for you to say, yo, he should do this or throw the jab or yo, <laughs> spin off and land the right hand. Like it's easier to say it from the outside looking in, yeah. but to actually pull it off is more difficult. And that's what I mean. Like you could say what's required, but some shit that might be required might be like, you know, like you could say, yo, he should just go on that show and just rap. He should rap right now. Yeah, you can say that from the outside looking in that he should rap right now. But how? Rap what? Where he going to get the raps from? Did he write the raps? Do he got to do other raps? He might got to go to studio after this and rap something. Is it business? Like, there's a lot that's going through this person's head when it come to rap because he's in it. You just like, yo, he should rap or he should do this or he should do a dance or he should, or he should do this beat. or he should, yeah, yeah, he should use this beat or he should have, he should rap like these people. And then you got so many people with scattered opinions that if you start listening, then you're going to hear a bunch of stuff. Like, I'm not only going to hear you say, yo, why you go to this second song like this? I'm going to hear somebody that's maybe just as qualified as you that's going to say the complete opposite. Mm -hmm. And then somebody that's going to say in between too. So who's right? The creator, because that's his, he's exactly. the artist. He's the artist. Exactly. And, that's his and you're supposed to create to the best of your ability and the most people that could relate to what you created going to fuck with that. Okay, mm -hmm. that's all that right there. <laughs> okay, so our uh, members' questions from uh, Michael Jermaine Darty. He says, since we do the breakdown of Eminem, can you break down Kendrick's rap style and Drake's rap style? Um, well, Drake, he got a lot of styles. Drake, mm. Drake, through different times, he used so many different styles. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, he got, I don't know, like, where he be getting all these styles from or who responsible for, like, coming up with the styles. But he got a lot of different styles. So um, sometimes I might hear Drake round one syllable. You know what I'm saying? And then sometimes I might hear Drake come on the verse and round four or five syllables and piece it up clean. Mm -hmm. So he do all different type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he might sing a melody and the shit might not even rhyme all the way. I heard him say lines where it didn't rhyme at all. Rhyme. But it was just, he said it in the flow and he said it fire. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right, he said right, it away. Right. <laughs> it just ain't rhyme. You know what I mean? And some people like that's cool. But I'm just saying, like me, I never rhyme one syllable, especially like if it ain't in, be in the in between a bar, like the end, the connecting rhyme. I never rhyme one syllable, like yeah. since the beginning of when niggas ever heard me. And I say so many rhymes, but every time I say it, it's always going to be pieced up. I'm going to be piecing up syllables in every rhyme I use figurative language. I do some type of punch, metaphors and similes and Stuff that you got to think about in every rap, even if it's for the girls, it's a commercial rap, it could be about anything. I do that every single time. So that's why I'm real critical about whatever people do. Right. So when I see them not doing it, it's like, yo, if I was like really cheating like that and just rhyming one syllable and not rhyming at all and just saying shit, it would just be like so easy to do that what would make how would you be able to tell who's the best if everybody just doing the same? Like, you know what I'm saying? What makes you be able to tell the best who's the best is people that could do shit that nobody else can do. Like, it's like damn near literally impossible for anybody to duplicate that. Right. Because it's too nice. And I don't feel like we at that, um, but... I probably got off the question with the Drake and the Kendrick shit. Like, I don't know their style completely, but... I feel like everybody make a mistake. And that's what I'm going to do on my podcast. Like, we'll go over people's music. And I'll oh, say, like... Oh, you had a like, breakdown podcast? Are you breaking down? Yeah, I'm not just throwing it out there like a random... um, Like, I'm just talking. Like, no. I'll, any artist that you pick... Like, see, if you want to break down Drake and Kendrick, it would have to be a specific song. Okay. You could play it. You could play the first two bars, mm -hmm. and then I'll break that down to you. Like, what right. did they did? Did they rhyme syllables? Did they use figurative language? And we can go through that. And I'll be able to point out to you, like, yo, that's one syllable. And one syllable is like rhyming ball, 
with all, like just that. She saw something with the ball and the saw something and they love us, not at all. And the only thing that rhyme is ball and all, nothing else. Right. So that's one syllable, ball, because your finger only bounce once saying ball. Ball and all is right. one syllable. Right. So the rhyme that is so easy, anybody could do that. Not niggas that don't even rap. You never had to rap in your life. And I could say, yo, what rhyme with all? And anybody could think of something. Right. Niggas say ball, tall, wall, call. Niggas will start thinking of wild shit that rhyme with all. Because it's so easy. It's only one syllable. But like, if I be like, um, like if I say what rhyme with like architecture, architecture, that's four syllables. Now, that's not the craziest. It's only four. But it's more difficult to find something that rhyme with architecture than it is with all. Right. So what would like, you do? All, as soon as I say, yo, what rhyme with bat? The the word base we're around with bat fat yeah you can start thinking the, quick the, yeah, yeah. but soon as I said like um like um like astrology it get more difficult you like hold on like you might could think of something after a while but you gotta really especially to rhyme the whole word I'm not talking about like tree and astrology because that's one syllable still because right. tree. And just the end of astrology, G. just the G at the end, right. that's just as easy as the one syllable I told you, because that's still one syllable. But the rhyme, the whole astrology, all of the syllables is difficult. It's not easy. So you're going to have to go in your bag to get something to go with. They even rhyme with it, period. Better yet, something that makes sense to what you're saying. And piece it up and make it make sense. Just to find something to rhyme, period, is difficult. So when you're doing that consistently... And you telling the story and making it make sense. It's like crazy. You, so you have to saying? put catastrophe. You would put catastrophe with astrology, something like that's what you would do. But Instead of putting energy. Uh, this, that's a good example because catastrophe don't rhyme with astrology. Just the two syllables at the end. So ca catas don't rhyme. With astra. So you have to. Just catas don't with, rhyme. Just strophe rhyme with, you know what I mean? Astra judge. La G, like a straw, yeah, La yeah, G. Yeah, yeah. So the last two syllables rhyme, but the first two don't. So, so you that's would, like a what broken would you rhyme. Do? You, you would, you, you, that's a broken rhyme. So if somebody used that, I'm not giving them points because that that's a that don't really rhyme. Oh. You know what I'm saying? That's like a it don't. It's you, a cheat, little cheat. Yeah, but if you could figure out, you know what I'm saying, something to make the whole rhyme come together, then it's like, damn, that shit is like crazy. And there's really people that could do it. It's like, you know, Fabulous could do it. Yeah. You know, um, Lloyd Banks could do it. Yeah. Like, Jada Kiss could do it. Griselda and them could do it. Like, Eminem could do it. Like, it's people that could do it, but it's not easy. And it's not like a lot of people could do it and right. keep piecing up and talking that shit like that. That's why you see people using one syllable or like two. Like, they've been rhyming two for so long that two syllables is easy not easy as one, but it's still easier. Mm -hmm. Like if I say, yo, what rhyme with um, humble? Tumble. Yeah, like it's jungle. easier. It's I can't easier. say jungle because jungle. Yeah, yeah. That's all, that all go to, depending on the pronunciation, but that's all go. Right. You could think of something because there's only two syllable words. Right. It's humble. The it's the four. Once it start getting to three or then four, four, then imagine if it go five or six syllables or seven or eight syllables and shit like that. Then it's like, damn, I couldn't even think of four. So how can I think of eight syllables to rhyme all the syllables? It's going to be difficult. So those, because those are now, that's a different, those are different levels. Those are what we consider lyricists now, right? For sure. Right? Those guys are the lyricists. Instead of saying that one symbol is like, syllables those guys are like ah oh, they dope whatever but when you start oh, doing even that they brain just designed to even think like that like when they go to think the right they think in syllables they think in similes and metaphors they think in punches they think of shit that's going to shock crowds and they mind is trained to write like that that you got to be a lyricist you got to be a certain type of a certain type of person to be able to even deliver that and that's rare it's easier to find people that could flow, have fun, dance, do all of that stuff. It's like easier to find that. It's more difficult to find somebody that could do that. Three, like, four, and five. Okay, I get that. And consistently. And consistently. Too. Like you might have a person that might, when we play this, they might think of the word. And they might 
call a word out in their head that rhymed with one of them words we said. But now think of another one. And now think of another one because you're going to need another one if you, after the first, sometimes you might put them two rhymes in one bar. So to rhyme it on the second bar, you need another one. Yeah. And then if you come with another line, you need another one. And they all got to connect and make sense. So just trying to do three or four lines, it just takes so much more time and thinking. Then if you just like, yo, I'm about to go to the block of op, busting the shot. The shit in the pop and the negative, like anything that just comes to your head, you just rhyming it. Yeah. It's like so easy. Yeah. You don't even gotta, it's yeah. no thinking. You could just say whatever I want to say. Like, yeah, whatever <laughs> on my mind, I could just say it. I don't gotta think about nothing. Yeah. But with that way, if I gotta figure out how to rhyme this shit, it's just like limited. It's a limited amount of pockets that I could go in to say something. So when I figure out how to say it, it's like genius. That's fire. And that's no, what I think is dope. That, that deep into it. Um, another member, um, J. M. C. McCall, did you ever consider joining state property? Um, state property. Um, they was on a little bit before I got on. I actually got with Beans one time. He was supposed to put me on the record. It's this record he did with Cosmic Kev. It was to the... Uh, Southern man, uh, it was that beat that everybody used to. Southern yeah, man, uh, uh, yeah. uh, Southern man, and he died. Piss on your grave, I shit on your tomb. Consider your doom. It was like a a rat beans dead on that beat. I was supposed to be on that freestyle with him back then, so we connected. Then I used to deal with an artist named Stevie G. He was from Philly, and. He used to manage like Beanie, he used to manage a lot of the major figures. He used to manage like um, Philly's Most Wanted. He managed like a lot of the groups that came from out of Philly. Mm. And um, I was down there messing with him and State Property was like dealing with him. So we got connected, but I never was like, it never was a, um, like I never even thought about like becoming State Property or being down with them. Like they was already established when I first started to hear about them. Like, I didn't know them before they put state property together. I was just like, y'all, like, when they came out with it, that's when I heard about them. And I started knowing about state property after they was already signed and putting out music and doing shit. Yeah. And I mean, that's around the time I started to hear about them. And then after that, they was already like a group, and I was already doing my thing. So I never thought about, you know, joining about state it, property, yeah. But I was cool with a lot of them, and... And you was cool with, uh, of course, people from Rockefeller. How was it when, you know, when Rockefeller and um, it was a state property, it was beefing and you were cool, and it was Swiss and, you know, they was cool with each other. How was that? Yeah, that was, um, that was a crazy time. You know what I'm saying? Like me being from Philly and those artists being from Philly and going through it and all that. It was like a little difficult time. It was kind of crazy, but. You know, I'm super team though. Like, you know what I mean? Even though I'm from the city and I'm from Philly, like Rough Riders and Swiss and them was my team. Your like team, those yeah. was the dudes I was running with and getting money with. So that was my team. I had to ride with them regardless of what was going on. So that's how I was feeling with anybody. Like not just state property, but anybody that had issues with them, I felt like they had issues with me too, because I was connected. Right. So that's how I was kind of carrying it. But I ain't really want to see that happen because I was like a fan of Beans. I fuck with his music. Right, he was spitting right. at that time. And then Kiss a Legend. You know what I'm saying? My inspiration too. So I ain't want to see that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like somebody got to lose or it got to get ugly Something one way or the other. And it's like, I ain't really want to see that. As long as it's keep like this, everything be all right. Yeah, I ain't really want to see that. And it was getting real. You know, back then, shit was kind of was kind of crazy at that time. So... It wasn't just staying on wax. Like it was like a little confusing and right, it was crossing right, yeah, over to yeah. the streets. So niggas was strapped. Niggas was like under pressure, never knowing when shit could happen. And it was like a tense time. So I'm happy they patched that up and got that shit together. But it was a classical moment for the culture. Like you could always reminisce, go back to them disc records in that time. And it was a moment. So for the culture, yeah, I'm Again. happy it happened. Um, I'm like, I'm not happy it happened because I ain't want them, but I'm happy it happened because that shit, a memorable moment. Right. You know what I mean? And two big, big 
powerhouses in the industry at the time going at it. Just like when me and Freeway battled, it was similar. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? The same thing. Same click against click. It's similar. Yeah, I, I know, I know you I know what you mean. Cause I was upset when uh was uh, D block and G Unit. I was like, ah, damn it. And I'm working for G Unit and just to go through this shit like Hell yeah. fan as D block super fan, you know. But glad it happened for the culture, but it's not competitive sport, man. Right, right. Sure. Um man. people say that you look like Professor Griff. You ever heard that before? Nah. <laughs> you never heard that before? Vlad told me to throw that in and ask him. People say you look like Professor Griff, bro. <laughs> Terminator X. Um, no. Since the last interview that you did on here, um, DMX died. Passed shout away. out to Professor Griff, though, man. But yeah, I shout out to never, Professor Griff. I never heard that. Um, DMX passed away. How did you feel when um, X, X passed? X a legend, man. Super energy. One of my inspirations. When I got signed to Rough Riders when I when I was 17, um, Swiss father, TD the negotiator, he brought me to Rough Riders and introduced me to his brothers and his son and brought me around. Mm. But when I met him, I wasn't familiar with him. I never seen him before. His fees wasn't famous. I thought X ran Rough Riders. Oh, really? I thought that was like DMX label. Like that's all you knew. Like. Yeah. He was like the main nigga, so I'm thinking like that's his shit. But when I got around and I seen how it was set up and how it was structured, um, I realized how it went. But because of that, he was a super inspiration. Man, he was the one bringing the money to the table when I first got down. He was the one selling all of the records. I even remember when he released them two albums in the same year and they both did all them crazy numbers. Classic. Crazy. Classic. So he was the super energy. Like every, all the attention and the main focus was X and everything after that was like, you know, you could reap the benefits or whatever dwindled down after right. X, but he was like the main priority at the time. So to like get in that predicament where you like the priority and like to be like that nigga is like, is what he inspired me to do and be your own way. Like yeah. I don't got to dress like how they tell me, I don't got to right. act or sit in the interview like how the publicist just told me here intentionally like not do nothing niggas wanted them to do he was in his own bag and still made it work and was super successful with it mm -hmm. so that's what inspired me like because they were making making it seem like you had to like um like you said we want another one of these we want another one of these like yeah. you got to be a carbon copy of everybody else and do what they tell you and sit like how they tell you and yeah. do this and act like yeah. this and don't say that and don't do this yeah. and don't it's like damn like i ain't think that the industry was like that when you a fan when you yeah. a fan you only looking at the fun parts but when you get in it as a business and you start seeing all the requirements you start looking different at even other interviews that you respected when you look back on them and you know why he sat like that or why he said mm -hmm. that or why you wanted him to answer that question and he curved it. And yeah. when you understand it better, you start looking at this shit as like, damn, this okay, shit I get fake, it man. Yeah, I, I get really like it, it like that. Now. Yeah. I used to think I was in love with this shit, but this shit ain't really what I thought, man. Right. So you start falling, falling out of love with it a little bit, especially the business. But the coach, I'm still in love with it. I'm a rap till I die, regardless if I don't make a dollar or not. Like even if, the angels came down and said, yo, you could never make a dollar of rap no more. I'm going to find another way to get to the money, but I'm going to still rap right. whenever I got an opportunity because I just blood. love to do it. Well, give me a classic a classic DMX Cassidy story. Um, I told, tell this story a couple of times. Um, but um, the most memorable moment like I got a few times when I was around X and like you know what I mean fucking with him but the most memorable time is when I was in Arizona recording and um this is like right before my accident this is when X lived out in um Arizona yeah mm -hmm. and I went to his house and I had um Dr. Benjamin with me Benjamin Shavis and he was like in the belly movie with him preaching to him in the movie so they already yeah. had a relationship and he jumped on one of my records. Is, is it because I'm black? He was like talking on one of my records on my project at that time. So we developed the relationship. 
So he was with me out there in Arizona. Okay. So we bought, like, I took him with me to X House. So they got to reconnect, you know what I'm saying, from yeah. the movie. And we was over there shooting pool and smoking and just wilding out. And he's showing me all of his bikes and his four wheelers and showing me his land and, and his dogs. And like, he just showing me all of this shit. And we got the vibe out really uh-huh. chill and, you know what I mean, talk and just. I was, cause that was like every other time I'd be around X is like either the studio or something going on, like shows and energy, and it's like we don't really get the chance to like chill, like you know what I mean. But this time it wasn't nothing going on. It was just in this house, niggas shooting pool. We playing pool with right. each other. We talking. We like laughing. Niggas fucking. I mean, it was a cool time. And then while we was leaving, I remember while he was like, it's like a dirt road before you could get back to the regular streets from his house. While we riding up the dirt road, he seen it like a giant scorpion. It was like some big ass scorpion. Mm. He was like, yo, y'all want to see a scorpion? So we all got out the car and he like showed us the scorpion and fucked it up and picked it up by his tail. And it was like wild poison coming from yeah. the tail and the shit was super big and he picked it up. And I'm like, yo, I wouldn't even touch the stinger. I wouldn't even, yeah, I don't care he if it's dead he or not. Me. Like I ain't I'm not touching no scorpion stinger, but he just picked it up, poison drippy, like, look. Look, and we looking. He even got Dr. Ben looking, everybody from the car looking and shaking their head like, yo, this nigga crazy. Crazy. And then he like, all right, dog, we out. Then he threw the shit down and spent back off on a four-wheeler, led us to the road, and then we was out. So that was a memorable moment. Like the most the Scorpio by the tail. And it was like the most time that I, like, you know, chill with X in like one day. Like we really got a chance to vibe out that day. Yeah. So that was a memorable moment for me. You um another memorable time was we um did the BET um cipher. It was me, DMX, Eve, and Murder Moot. Mm-hmm. And we represented um for the Rough Riders. Right. And it was like a BET cipher, but we had to like shoot it and record it. And um I think it was like Murder Mook went first, then I went, then Eve went, and then X went. I think it was like that. I think it was like that, but yeah, it was the BET cipher, and we all rapped on there. Was it the and last was, time you saw X? Because yeah, I never got a chance to do no records with X. Yeah. Like if you think about it, that whole time I was down with Rough Riders, and yeah. I was popping. Like we never did no, like yeah, we never did no records that we was on the same record before. Like I ain't never get a chance to do no work with him. That's crazy. And there too. was stuff talking about. I know, like. We were supposed to like work some. I don't know, but what for some reason we never. Timing? I never. I don't even really know, like, but I know I never got no. Yeah, I never did no records with X. So that was like the first time me like working with him, like at that cipher, like where we rapping next to each other and like yeah. together. Even though it wasn't a song, it was the same cipher. Yeah. So that was my first time like working with him for real. So that was a memorable moment too. Wow, that's crazy. That's a. Yeah. Thoughts on the AI music? Because now AI could start probably doing battle rapping now. Artificial intelligence is probably going to be doing URL for you guys. That's dope. What's your th- what's, that's dope? Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's <laughs> you want the AI to start rapping and, and making money from you guys? Nah, that part not dope, <laughs> but the fact that technology is advancing fast like how it is. Yeah. Like in this short period of time, there's just so much advancements and so much shit that we thought was like not even possible that we just do every day like it's nothing. Right. So just imagine what's gonna happen in the next 10, 20, 30 years, like 40 years from now, imagine the technology and the shit we gonna be able to do and have. And it's like, I guess that's that's what I mean is dope about it. You know what I mean? But I guess anybody that these AIs gonna be replacing ain't looking forward to it because a lot of people not gonna have jobs. And it's gonna come to the creatives last. Like mm-hmm. that's gonna be the hardest thing to replace, like creatives and like people using their minds, especially like to come up with like raps and shit like that. But you could just tell this it's AI, be, rap like Cassidy and give me a song, and he's gonna do it. They did that yeah, to Drake the voice, and Weekend. The voice the voice now and they like mastering the voice, the projection of the voice. So now you could like go use this AI program. I could write the rap. I could go in the booth and rap it, but use this 
program and mm. then it comes out in that or artist voice that the AI make it like they voice. But somebody still got to be the creator of the lyrics, the the bars. Yeah. And they trying to figure out, they got AIs rapping now and they got all of the words and they know how to, what words rhyme, but to actually put it together a certain way and make it right is like going to be difficult. That like takes a soul. Like it take a spirit for you to affect people and move people like that. So I don't think an AI going to be able to replace that type of energy. Yeah. But it will replace right now. It, but it will be <laughs> it will be able to replace a lot of physical work. Like all things people do like as far as like physical or pushing buttons or driving or doing this or moving this or mm-hmm. like all of the shit that people do like that the AI is going to be able to do cuz that's just a program. It could just easily make them be able to do stuff like that. So um a lot of people going to be out of jobs. But that's dope cuz um, I don't feel like everybody should be working anyway. <laughs> what? But we need stuff to get done. Like if people stop working, then stuff not going to get done. So you need people to work. But if you had AI that could do a bunch of the jobs that people would have to do, then we have more time for people to be creative. Okay, he's on a creative Innovative, side. Yeah, okay. like really do what they <laughs> supposed to do, not have to worry about paying bills or getting up to work every day. Yeah. Now I could just worry about other stuff and um it might get better you know what i'm saying but now you're not now people are not gonna get paid though the people are like you know how you gonna well, it's enough like what people don't realize is that money even getting paid for something is something that somebody made up like it's just a a, a, a system that somebody made up yeah like, like giving us five days for the weekend and two days for the weekend who made that shit up <laughs> yeah basically everything is based off um intelligence and like natural capability. Like that's what like run the world. So like you naturally capable of doing certain stuff, that's just like genetically, like the strongest people or the fastest people or the like, you know what I mean? The slickest people or the person that can spin the burden or dance the best and do that. Like that's going to always be important. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then the information that you got is always going to be important, regardless if it's money or not, even if they, like there's no more money and then there's all credit or there's no more credit or nothing. They come up with some whole new way. Oh, like information still going to be what's make you give whatever, whether it's money, your credit, your time, whatever. What's make you going to give that up is the information that you don't got. And that's why you pay for everything that you don't got. The information that you don't got. Like you'll go pay a doctor if you feel sick and you feel like something really about to happen to you. You'll pay a doctor to help you, like, first of all, just to find out why I feel like this. You'll pay him for that alone, not even to fix you fix or heal you. you. Yeah, that's just to Just tell to tell me why I feel like this in the first place. Mm-hmm. You'll pay him to do that. And he got the information to know what to do to find it out. You don't got that. So that's why you got to pay him for that. And if he going to put a plan together to help you heal or get better, he got the information, you don't. So you got to pay him for that. For that That's why he's going to be too. viable. Mm-hmm. So whether there's money, credit, your time, whatever, you're going to be willing to do that to help yourself get better at all times. Same thing with lawyers, like you brought them up earlier. They know the law. They know all of the fluctuations, all of the games niggas could play, so you need them. If yeah, you had all of the information that a lawyer got, why would you pay a lawyer? You could just go defend yourself, yeah. get yourself out of jail. Get yourself home and get all your friends home if you had all that information, but you don't. And you don't got the paperwork to show that you got that information. So so what now? Go to AI and, let, and get the information for law? Information is going to always be important. And whoever got, like, even in the music business, the dudes that don't got no talent be the richest because they got the information. Y'all got That's talent. True. You yeah. know how to rap, but you don't know how to do nothing with yeah. it. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do with the fact you know how to rap? Like, you know what I'm saying? And I got all the information and that's why people real, they not trying to share all of the information, especially if they know that's what put them in position. Nah. They not trying to share it. They know that's what keeps them in position, position. information that they got. Yep. And it's going to always be like that, man. I'm going to pay for an Xbox or I'm going to pay for a PlayStation 5 because I don't know how to make the game. I don't know how to 
make that shit like that to be as convenient so I could have fun and play. Right. But if I had the information to just take stuff that's in my house, put it together and make the same thing, then why would I pay, pay for that? Pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Or sometimes you might got the information and you might could pull it off, but it's time consuming. That's another thing. That's why you might pay for stuff too. Like I could go make a burger in my house, but I have to be to work in a certain amount of time and I only got this limited amount of time. So I'm going to stop at McDonald's, grab the burger in one minute, eat on my way to work and then go to work. I don't got time to run home, probably missing ingredients, go grab them or put it together and cook it. It's just too much time. Go back to the supermarket because I don't have the seasoning or the bread. Some people might know how to sew a little bit, but to put together an outfit and something fly that you could really wear and rock is going to take so much time for you to just put one outfit together. So just imagine you trying to do all of your clothes. It's going to take up a lot of time. So that's why I'd rather just go buy your outfit. You know what I mean? You're going to pay for what saves your the time. Convenience. The convenience. And then you pay for the information that you don't got. Yeah. And that's going to always stay the same. Never going to change. Before I let you go, this is it. This is the moment I've been waiting for. Can we get a little freestyle? We got some bars. Then I then never we... heard Vlad ask nobody to freestyle. Vlad said, ask him for some bars. <laughs> right there. Acapella freestyle. <laughs> All right, I told these niggas. Let me see. Put Cassidy on the spot, Spence. <laughs> <laughs> Look. This nigga chick sent me a pic. The bitch was half undressed. Then she sent the vid fully nude, all ass and breast. Cast the best, this God given. And I do this for my guys in prison that call Cast Collect. Stop pocket watching, try and count how much Cast Collect. Cast could break your arms and see how much dust your Cast Collect. I'm mad upset, but I've been meditating. Taking the legal medication, remaining sturdy, I'm never shaking. <laughs> I told them niggas my block only got white nigga we segregating until I'm getting that chicken that Mayweather making I ain't sitting still like Freddie Roach I'm with whatever shaking I used to play the corner now I'm thinking out the box I get a funny feeling cause I'm dealing thinking about the cops I think I'm about to cop a bigger house somewhere near some fake white people and call it the real nigga house Slaves get they master paid just to get the clout, but fuck the freeway, I took a different route. Listen, you could pull chicken out, but don't chicken out for them blood diamonds dripping, they had your blood dripping out. Listen, you just rap for a living, I really live it out. Don't spit about some shit you don't know shit about. Real shit, I wish that I could break my niggas out who gotta swallow balloons in the visiting room and then shit them out. My brody told me it hurt when them bullets hit him, and there's still bullets in him because the surgeon couldn't get him out. <laughs> Ouch. Getting hit with the lead he can't forget about, but I could hit a chick for some head and then forget the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> on God, I ain't even pop shorty yet, but on God, I got shorty wet like I'm giving baptisms out. The Lord bless me, I'm gifted, I'm giving wisdom out. Like sunflower seeds, I just spit them out. Bars. Bars. Thank you. Cassidy, Vlad TV, Coach PR. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you. Thanks for having me, man.